how to distress new wood the easy way. Well, I'm gonna show you how I distressed this piece with only one tool. We're gonna do it here on Dude Sawdust on this episode. So stick around, we're gonna do it right now. There are many ways to distress wood. There are two main areas that people usually focus on. Number one is distressing the physical integrity of the wood, the physical composition, if you will. The second area that people focus on is distressing the paint, the color, the finish, the stain, to make it look aged or weathered. When distressing the physical integrity of the wood, there are three main types of marks that are usually made. Number one is dents, two is scratches, and three is holes. I'm gonna show you how to distress wood with just one single tool. You really don't need any more than that. You can be more elaborate if you like, but if you're on a budget and you wanna make it easy, you wanna grab that one tool, that go-to tool that does it all for distressing the integrity of the wood, I got the tool for you. You can put aside other tools that do a similar job. Those tools include the five-in-one painter's tool, a hammer, a nail, a screw. People like to use chains, even saws like a reciprocating saw or an angle grinder is really good for distressing wood as well. But I'm gonna give you the one tool that does it all, that gives you the dents, scratches, and holes that you're looking for for that really cool distressed weathered look. Holes are a really good feature to add to any distressed wood look. They mimic the damage that is left by wood boring beetles. Scratches and dents are also different features you're going to add to your distressed wood look. Scratches and dents represent working the wear and tear, the everyday use of wood. Also when it comes in contact with things where you're moving the wood around or animals such as scratching on the wood. So there's some really cool features that you can add to your distressed wood look. And there's only one tool that can do it all. What's the one tool you ask? The one tool that can do it all? The awl can do it all. Now this isn't like any other awl. The Drasco Pro Awl is a really good awl in my opinion. There are many awls that have a wooden tip and they're a little lighter weight and they don't really have the heft that this does. Now I weighed it and I clocked the scale at 5.2 ounces. I'm gonna put a link in the description to this awl on Amazon. If you wanna support the channel when you purchase through that link, we get a little extra commission at no extra charge to you. In the specs description of that link, it says that this weighs 3.2 ounces. Now, I don't know where the discrepancy is coming from, but my scale says 5.2 ounces. Maybe my scale is off, but I did zero it out. Just an FYI. Having said that, when I hold this in my hand, it has a lot of heft to it, and you're gonna need that heft for the distressing that we're gonna do. I'm gonna suggest you also bring along a paper towel, or you could even use parchment paper if you want when doing this process. When you use this to bang against the wood, it will leave a blue mark because there's blue all over this awl. So by leaving the paper towel between the awl and the wood, it'll protect the wood from getting the blue marks on it. Okay, let's begin the distressing process. Now this Dasco Pro 7 inch scratch awl is made of heat treated high carbon steel. This is no awl to be underestimated. We're gonna begin by just adding those holes that mimic the wood boring beetle. I like to clump them up in a, in a patch and then leave a trail where those wood boring beetles went. You can go random as well all over, kind of give it a good look. I also like to add a second patch. Another thing, you want to add the scratches. Let's give it a Wolverine superhero look. Wolverine has three claws. That's pretty cool. So we got our scratches. And the third thing is using the end of the awl to apply the dents. Like I said before, make sure you use a paper towel or some type of in-between material to add those dents. And you can use this side as well as the corner or the flat end. Just make sure you don't poke yourself because the awl is fairly sharp. You can go different angles. 
Let's go to the corner. A few more little holes. I'll get, I'll get some more scratches over here. Okay, now let's begin the staining process. I'm gonna be using a classic walnut stain by Minwax. Always remember to mix Nitrile or latex gloves is also very important. You'll have to work in those holes a little bit and the dents because the stain sometimes glides over the top of it. Take a new rag and we're gonna wipe it right on off. Now that special walnut really brings out, you can see the scratches, the holes. In fact, if you look closely, the stain didn't even get all the way in there. So that's what it looks like with the stain over the top. Let's add more stain to those holes and see how that looks. Now we'll see the difference. You see how that adds? Such a cool look to it. So this is a well distressed. Let's make this really nice. We're gonna put a water-based polyurethane three coats on this and really make it pop. This is gonna be a really cool piece. I'm gonna use this Bear brand by Home Depot. I really like it. It has given me excellent, excellent results. And I'll leave links in the description for all the products that I use. I'm gonna let this first coat dry. I'm gonna come back and do two more coats and we're gonna show you the final product and see how cool it looks. Check out this video right here where I make a six level wall mounted shoe rack on a French cleat. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring that bell. After putting on three coats of this finish, sure came out nice. If you like wood distressing techniques, watch the video right here. We'll see you next time on Dude Sawdust. Dude Sawdust out.